there are many legitimate reasons why Susan Smith is unfit to serve on the Columbia Citizens Police Review Board. One need look no further than her offensive opening statements from the August 4th meeting that can be found here on YouTube to see that there is a problem. Another obvious justification for her removal was made clear by Epen Thampy during the August 11th meeting when he asked how many CPD officers are her former students and if this creates a conflict of interest. She provided one disingenuous answer and then refused to answer further. Her refusal to be open and honest is a direct violation of the Nicole Code of Ethics. The video of this interaction can also be found here on YouTube. This video will provide specific evidence of Susan Smith's absolute disregard for the ordinance that governs the Columbia Citizens Police Review Board on which she serves. Before we begin, let's take a look at an important part of the ordinance. Board members shall follow the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement NACOL, Code of Ethics. According to the Nicole Code of Ethics, the CPRB should pursue open, candid, and non-defensive dialogue with stakeholders. More specifically, according to the City Ordinance, the Board shall provide an opportunity for public comment at each monthly meeting. Pay attention to Ms. Smith as she tries to deny public comment. Okay, the Board needs to decide if you're going to unanimously decide to have public comment. Do you want everybody to have 10 minutes, or do you want 5 minutes, 3 minutes? How would you like to handle that? Well, I would like to suggest, and it's just a suggestion, I mean, he is the complainant, and we have one other official complainant in the room. I think they should each get up to 10 minutes, certainly feel free to use less. And then, and then anybody else, I think we should stick with our normal rules, three minutes if they're an individual, five minutes if they're representing an organization. So three and five, except for Mr. Rose. That's just my suggestion. And, and is it, you said Baca, Ms. Baca? Well, Angela, right. Yeah. Is there any discussion by the board? I would disagree. I have nothing really to hear anymore, um, and especially from Mr. Rosenthal. So we've decided it, and I think we should proceed. Um, so if we have public comment, I think it should be, if we decide to have public comment, I think it should be our standard five and three. No special accommodations for anyone following the procedures, the integrity of the process, five and three. The Nicole Code of Ethics instructs board members to conduct investigations, audits, evaluations, and reviews with diligence, an open and questioning mind, integrity, objectivity, and fairness in a timely manner. Rigorously test the accuracy and reliability of information from all sources. Present the facts and findings without regard to personal beliefs or concern for personal, professional, or political consequences. In the next clip, Susan Smith reads a prepared statement where she refers to two pit bulls. It is important to note that one officer's report did mistakenly mention two pit bulls, but the rest of the SWAT officers and all of the media reported the presence of one pit bull and one corgi. The homeowner also had two pit bulls. These, um, these animals have been known to be used as a first line of defense for those involved in the distribution of drugs. There are two explanations for this section of her statement. Either she didn't bother with more than a mere cursory perusal of the evidence during her investigation, or she opted to use the most frightening information regardless of the facts in order to influence the board. Both possibilities are a violation of the Nicole Code of Ethics. In the next and final clip, Susan Smith makes reference to the evidence contained in the affidavit for the search warrant. Which has caused many to be distracted from the series of facts and evidence that told a different story. The facts and evidence that we saw from the video, from everything that was given to us, a search warrant based on reliable statements was issued. The only evidence in the affidavit were two statements from paid confidential informants and a baggie with marijuana residue obtained in a trash pull. The statement from one confidential informant was over a year old. Confidential informants are always criminals seeking lighter sentences in exchange for information. The trash pull only provided evidence of marijuana use. Again, Susan Smith bends the truth to serve her own agenda. 
please write to both the CPRB and the City Council and ask that Susan Smith be removed from the board. Contact information can be found at www.gocolumbiamo.com.